Hey guys, good evening. Um, I hope y'all are having a good day and I'm, um, I'm going to, uh, kind of preach to you for 15, 10, 15 minutes about managing, ma managing the mirage. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done, and I thank you for what you're about to do. Heal, restore, deliver us through your word today, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that we'll learn to manage the stories we see in our head. And Lord God, I pray that we'll learn to tell your stories instead of our own horrible stories. Stories of victory, stories of life, stories of strength, stories of in the name of Jesus, amen. Hi guys, this week's sermon came about in such a weird way. <laughs> um, I often like to get my sermons from stories from my own life. Uh, and I was looking, a few weeks ago, it was my birthday, as many of you know, on the 14th of September. And I... And I was looking at my friend's birthday message, and I, I could, I could have sworn she said, "Are you okay?" Now this made me think, "Oh, did I say something on the video that was not okay? Did I look sad or depressed?" I just look back now, and. <laughs> And I, I realized that it was not me that said, are you okay? It was, she said, how was your birthday? I hope, hope you had a good birthday. And I said, I said it was okay. And it made me think of the stories we tell ourselves and, um, the things we think we see that are not really there, uh, the miscommunications in life. I spent last week, um, last week's time together talking about uh, communication and uh, different ways of communicating and how we, um, we all communicate, but some of us communicate stronger in one way than another um, and sometimes uh, we don't manage what we see right we don't take it in right so we just make up all these kind of things in our mind which are which are not really there <laughs> I remember this one one time where um, mom, my mom and I, I have the greatest mom in the world, shout out to, to my mother. She doesn't have Facebook, but mom, shout out. I love you. Uh, anyway, we prayed together every night and about two, and about a year ago now, um, she, she usually used to call me at 10. It's earlier now because of our schedules, but um, she used to call me at 10 and I was in my bed early so I thought uh, why isn't she calling me I waited and waited and waited and waited I was like why isn't she calling me she knows I can't call her because of my the way my phone works in my bed so she used to call me I can answer, but I just can't call out. Um, so I waited and waited, and I was like, why isn't she calling me? And then I thought, oh. And then my mind started to think of, oh, what if she wasn't an accident? And my mind started to play all these kind of um, scenarios out. What if she can't get a hold of me? My mind went so far into thinking, oh, what if she's, what if she died and I don't know? So my mind, 
my mind serving up a story of my mother dying and the moment I thought that she called but I was so worried that she had died and I didn't know so my mind was making up some stories and I sense today that because of the pandemic because of the racial unrest and because of everything going on this year some of you are making up stories in your mind we don't mean to make up stories in our mind we just fill in gaps oh God's doing this and oh God's punishing the world because of their sin or whatever so what, where we don't find a answers, we tend to fill in gaps. And the Lord's saying, stop filling in gaps. Manage the mirage. A mirage is um, something that you think is there, but it's really not there. And there are so many people that are seeing things, making up stories in their head that are not really there. And the Lord's saying to stop it. He's saying to trust me and trust my word, words and manage the mirage. Because sometimes um, a mirage can be a good thing and sometimes it can be a bad thing. If you're in the desert and you're seeing a mirage of water, it's not really there, but it gives you hope that there's water coming. So you may see, see a vision in your head for where the Lord is taking you, but it's not really there now. So, so it's kind of a mirage, but it's a good mirage. And, um, but on the other hand, there are bad mirages, bad stories that we tell ourselves that, oh, we're not good enough, oh, we're going to die, and, oh, this pandemic is going to kill us, or whatever, or we'll never get into this job situation, all these negative, horrific stories. And what you feed is what grows. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you that again. What you feed is what grows. So if you feed negativity, negativity will grow. And if you feed positivity, positivity will grow. I'm not saying that negative things won't happen. I'm not saying that everything is going to be positive if you look on the other side, but if you feed it, it will diminish. And if you, no, if you starve it, it will diminish. If you feed it, it will grow. And I'm not saying that everything will be positive in roses. If you just think positive, you'll never have anything happen to you again. But I'm saying when you do have things happen to you and you feed the positivity, your outlook will change. And when your outlook changes, baby, get ready for a miracle. Get ready for God to do some wonderful things in your life. It's, it's not about what happens to you. It's about how God can use what happen, happens to you to, to, to glorify Him. And it's about what he can do what ha with what happened in your life. So this pandemic, I, I don't know exactly what, what happened or whatever, but all I know is I'm choosing to look at the positive side. Not everything about it is positive. Not everything about it is Oh, I give God praise, but in all things, I give God thanks. In all things, not for all things. Because when you're in a situation and you give God thanks, that changes your perspective. It makes you lighter. 
It makes you able to cope. So manage the, the mirage. So manage what you're not seeing until you see it. If you see it in your, your mind, manage it. Um, and if you see something negative in your mind, manage it. And you'll learn tools how to do that when you manage the mirage in your head. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The Lord really in this season, I believe, wants to give the church his mind. Um, the Lord in this season, I really believe, wants to give the church his mind. But I think we're still so st stuck in what we always do. Uh, so we're, we're trying to adapt and do things that way. Um, but what I sense the Lord is saying, the Lord wants to give us a new way to do church, a new way to, to peek into his mind, peek into his thoughts. I think every, every pastor, every leader needs to ask the Lord, Lord, what is your mind for this season? How would you want us to preach the gospel? I tend to think he wants to go fur further than online. He wants to go further than Zoom. He wants to create new platforms. He wants to do things that the church has never seen. But we're not really, we're trying to adapt in the way that we've always known preaching, that we've always known teaching, that we've always known worship. But he wants to do something new and he wants a pastor, he wants a preacher that will ask for his mind, for his wisdom in ways that he would want to minister in this season, ways that he would want to reach his people in this season. He totally wants to do something amazing, but we're not hearing. We're trying to adapt, find new ways to do uh, an old thing, like, because we're so used to people standing up and preaching that we think that's it. But he, he God's mind is so vast, so we need to ask for the mind of Christ. I thought it would, in my mind, I was thinking it would be great to have 24-hour ministry going on where pastors um, uh, take turns preaching the word, that one worship leader, one pastor, like, instead of having uh, a worship team either at home or at the church building and one pastor why not have like one worship leader and and one preacher to minister the word of God instead of a two hour service every hour and I was like he was like 24 hour ministry, not even 24 hours, just continuous ministry. And I was like, whoa, really? <laughs> I was like, how would we do that? He was like, pastors would rotate, worship leaders would rotate. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, so God really wants to give us his mind, I think we just need to totally step out of what we knew before. I think uh, pastors are ready to do that, but I think we just don't know how to ask, what is your mind, God? What, what do you want? I think, I think we so want that, but I don't think 
we actually know how to ask for that, uh, to ask for that mind. And this 24-hour ministry idea, I was like, oh my God, it just blew my mind. He was, he's like, um, he showed me uh, a place where ministry does not stop. And I was like, um, how does, and he told me how it would work just to rotate the pastors and worship leaders and instead of having a big worship team why not just have like one worship leader do a couple songs an hour and have a, a pastor do a 20 minute sermon every every hour and there's oh my god and different churches can join together and I thought oh I was like, this is insane. Um, but yeah, I think his mind in this season is different and we just need to um, grab hold of it. And he also showed me about breaking the fourth wall. I, I told you about this, um, like how in TV there are three walls and the fourth wall is the studio audience. So I think we're trying to preach to uh, um, to the people when I see something totally interactive. I see question and answer, oh, just nutty things. <laughs> it's just amazing. And I see just ongoing ministry and oh, just amazing stuff. But I think that not only pastors, but people need to reach out for the mind of God. We need to ask the Lord right now, right where we sit, Lord, what is your mind for my job? Lord Jesus, what is your mind for my marriage? What is your, your mind for your for my kids? Because God's, God's thoughts are much higher than our thoughts. And if we can get God's mind, we will be able to turn the whole world upside down. But we need to really stop talking about this new normal and really get get alone, get by ourselves and say, God, what would you want me to do? And I think that if we would just let go what we know God will bring what he sees and what he knows to us we just need to pretend that we're stupid and we don't we don't really know anything and let him fill us, fill us up with his wisdom it's like Solomon did the only thing Solomon asked was for wisdom and with wisdom came wealth, came all of that. Now, later on, he misused it. But the fact that he asked for wisdom was the catalyst to all the great things. And even after all the mess he experienced with women and stuff like that, he, he said in Ecclesiastes, he said, the most important thing is to love God and keep his commandments and that is the best wisdom you can ever ask for so even in spite of his mess he came out of it greater he came out of it with what I call spiritual muscle and uh, that's what he wants for us it's going to be a new form of church I don't know how God's going to do it but it's going to be a new form of church. What he's showing me is totally amazing. He's showing me that ministry doesn't have to stop. It's just, wow! Um, he's showing me that counselors, prayer partners, and other people can be available 24-7 for people on video call and 
just oh my god, just sessions of teaching and oh wow, I just I was, my mind is being blown. Um. Okay, so I'll see you later. So, if you don't know what to do in a given situation, ask the Lord for your mind, for His mind in that specific situation. Ask God for His mind for your health. Ask God for His mind for your money. Ask God for His mind for for whatever He has for you, because He has a plan. All you have to do is ask. Ask for the mind of God in every circumstance. If you're a pastor, ask God for his mind for your church and how he wants you to minister. Bye, guys. And when you ask God for his mind, he will provide the resources. You don't have to worry about the resources. He will send people and provide the resources. Bye, guys. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospers. How do you prosper first? Well, you prosper in your mind, which is, your mind is different than your brain. Your brain is where your central nervous system for your body, like it's where, it's where, um, like, the control center for your body um, like your hand if you lift your hand your brain is telling your mind to your brain is telling your hand to lift your mind is your your mind your will and emotions so we need to ask for the mind of Christ, we need to ask for the will of Christ, we need to ask for the emotions of Christ. Lord, how do you want us to feel in this circumstance? How do you want us to navigate this? And I think when we ask for his mind, we don't believe that God has emotions, but I believe he does. He said he is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. That means he has emotions. And we are in his image. He created us in his image. Um, according to Genesis, we are made in his own image. So if we have emotions, he has emotions, but he doesn't let his emotions control him. That's the difference between him and us. We often let our emotions and what we feel control what we do, and, and he doesn't. He's very structured in his emotions. His emotions have, have a purpose to drive him to do... to do his... His father's will. So. So we need to ask him for his mind, his will, and his emotions. In every circumstance. For our families, for our homes, for our lives. And if we ask for wisdom if we ask for his mind the bible says he will give willingly and he'll load us in another scripture in psalms he said he'll load us daily with benefits we just need to ask we have not because he asked not 
and people need to start asking for the mind of God for their lives in, in specific areas and in general. Do not be afraid to ask. He's your father. He's, he's waiting for you to ask. And through a process of time, he in his perfect will will give you what he deems necessary for that area in your life. He won't always give you what he wants, but he'll give you what is necessary for that time. And he'll often take you through a process that you'll that you'll come out greater than you than you were when you went in. But we don't like process. We we like things right away. But he's saying, I I I need to take you through the process. Respect the process and know that it'll be good for you in the end. It's building you. It's building spiritual muscle. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Amen. See you guys later.